Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. As you go to the eighth chapter of the book of Matt, wow, this is taller. All right, I just got shorter. Now, the other thing, I think the other one's about, this, about down here. So. Praise God. Can somebody say glory to God? God. Let's read Matthew's gospel starting in the 8th chapter uh, from verses 5 through 13. And when Jesus was coming to Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. And Jesus saith to him, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Now, if you read the other account of this over in Luke, it says that the servant sent, or the centurion sent servants to Jesus. And this is just a... um, um, a variance on the, how the story was told. Uh, they were his representatives, so one just doesn't go into the detail that he's actually, he sent servants as his representative to come to Jesus. Um, so they went, the, in Luke's gospel, the clarity is that he sent, sent servants who spoke for him. Okay? Um, My servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I, listen to this, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus marveled, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Okay, so we have the centurion here, and um, of course, man, like we said, the Matthews and Luke's gospel, if you look over in Luke chapter um, 7, 1 through 10, we have the, this account told with a little more detail. Um, and in Luke's, we find out that he loved their nation, he built them a synagogue, that the centurion's servant was dear to him. Luke 7, 2 says that. Um, the servants of the centurion even said that he was worthy of it. Now, let's hear Jesus, the elders were saying the man was worthy of this because of all the things he had done for them. But Jesus said this. Now, look, he relates the man's understanding of authority to great faith. Great faith operates in the realm of understanding authority. Now, let me say this. Our generation, our past couple of generations, has been the most disrespectful to authority we've known in, in, in hundreds of years. The most absolutely disrespectful, I mean, it started in the 60s, the police were the pigs, you know? And that all starts, and, and this, you college professors just snap it up, you got the tough wet road ahead of you for the extra years. Your liberalism and your indoctrination on our college campuses is coming to an end. Conservative students are getting fed up. And they're saying, uh, uh, forget it. They're saying, forget it. They kicked a police officer out of the classroom the other day in uniform because he had a weapon. Because they're anti-gun. He's got a legal right to carry that weapon anywhere he goes. You can you can't, you can put a sign that says no weapons allowed and it don't matter. He's a police officer. He can go in there with it. Yeah, that's right. They, you know, when somebody starts start shooting everybody, then they want the police officers to show up. Yeah. So, but that we've taught lack of respect on our college campuses because you've got a bunch of communist professors. I mean, just, I'll be real honest with you. They're Lenin Marxist, secular humanist. They, but their God is a God of atheism. That's what they believe. That's what they teach. That's what they indoctrinate students on college campuses with. And, and their kids are starting to get set. Some kids were told to take down their Christmas decoration at a fraternity on a college campus. And they doubled it up. 
Conser- people who are conservative and cr- cr- Christian in values have had it. Some guy sued the town somewhere in the Midwest over their cross on a Christmas tree, and the city council took it down because they, ha- they didn't have the court cost to fight, which is what these liberals know. So everybody in town put crosses on their windows, on their lawns, wore, wore coats and shirts with crosses on them. And because the guy said he was suffering irreparable psychological damage from seeing the cross every day. He's probably in the hospital by now. But see, Christians are going to start suing for suffering psychological damage for not seeing the cross. You've got to beat them at their own game. Anyway, the most disrespectful. This is not a mistake. This teaching of disrespect of authority is demonic. Why is it demonic? Because it undermines the very thing that God says that the believer must live by. And that is the just shall live by faith. And in order to live by faith, you have to understand authority. Well, I just let the kids call me by my first name. Kids, parents let their kids call them by their first name. I got, I got in-laws. Sisters-in-laws, I've had them, call my parents by their first name. Always have. I never, I never, I've been married to Janie for 35 years, we dated four years, I never called her mom or her dad by their first name. I always, still to this day, I still refer to her mother as Miss Glisten. Now, Mr. Glisten, sometimes I'd call him boss man, you know, but, you know, that was kind of a, but it, it, never by his first name. Why? Respect. I said respect. I go to my kids' school. I got teachers that are younger than me, and I refer to them because, you know, they're like the principal is, is, is Mr. So-and-so. Even now, when I'm subbing, I still Because for my children, I had to demonstrate that he is the authority in charge. And one day I heard one of his kids call him by his first name at, a, at, at one of the, the games. Tried to get his attention. Called him, hey. And called us. I'm, I'm thinking... Are you serious? Well, when you grow up, you become friends. This, this push to disrespect authority is demonic. Because the head of the church equated understanding authority with the ability to walk by faith. And I'll take him over somebody with a bunch of letters behind their name. Are you here? Brother Hagin said finally he figured out one day that Ph.D. meant post hole digger. Because a common post hole digger had more sense than, none of these people, than some of these people have. You know, doc, for a doctorate of philosophy means you're supposed to understand the material better than anybody. Common post hole digger knows better than some of this stuff. Are you here? So Jesus said, after the man says, I understand authority, Jesus said, I haven't found this kind of faith anywhere. In all of Israel, I've not found this kind of faith. Man understood authority. Okay? And so, um, what is authority? We've said this before. The Greek word for authority here, or, you know, I've been set under authority, is exousia, and it is different than dunamis. Dunamis is power, explosive power. Um, it, it, God creates dunamis. It comes from heaven. Exousia, or authority, is delegated, is a delegation of power through us. God delegates us to use his power. Oh, glory. I said God delegates to us to use his power. Amen? Hallelujah. And so we need to understand that. The centurion heard the words. Jesus said, this is great faith. Even up until this point in the story, faith's not even mentioned. It's not a faith lesson. He didn't start out, Jesus didn't start out and say, turn to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. That was a joke, people. Amen. Brother Hagin, open your Bibles to Mark the 11th chapter, all right? Jesus didn't, when this story starts out, it doesn't say, Jesus said, I, I, it said in Mark, you know, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, and shall not believe things that say, shall come to pass, and have whatsoever he saith. Faith's not even mentioned. Come here, my servant. I'll come here. Nope, you don't have to come here. Speak the word only. Wow. For I am a man under authority. Now look what happened as soon as you said, I am a man under authority. And I say to this one, go. He goes. To this one, come. What's that? He didn't say, I have authority. He said, I'm set under authority. But the man or woman 
under authority can exercise authority. Go and you go. He understood that because he was under authority, he could exercise authority. Go and he goeth, come and he cometh, do this and he doeth it. Amen. So speak the word only and my servant will be healed. He recognized that Jesus was set under authority. Therefore, he could speak to disease and command it to go and it would go. Amen. Amen. Now, Again, in this, this is the case, Jesus didn't go to the centurion and said, I command this, the disease of God's servant. He came to him. In other words, he granted him the right to exercise that authority there. Amen. Amen. You cannot exercise authority where your exercising of that authority is not wanted. Right. If, they, if they're resistant to it. Well, I'll just speak over your body. You'll be healed in Jesus' name. I don't believe in that stuff. You can't exercise it. Unless a gift of the Spirit's in manifestation. And we talked about that last week. You can't make it work where it's not wanted. Now, what, what happens when a gift of the Spirit happens? That's sovereign. That's all, all bets are off. I said all bets are off. You know? And but you can't go mimic it again. We, we've told the story. Dad Hagen used to tell about, about the service he has. His, this woman, now the back story is this woman brought her husband. She'd been after him for years to come to church. And he wouldn't ever come, wouldn't ever come, wouldn't ever come. Kane finally came to one of Brother Hagen's. He's been holding meetings and services in that church and there for several weeks. And he's in the middle of the meeting. And he's, he's uh, getting ready to start, start ministering to the sick. And this, this, old, this old rascal, honorary, yeah, honorary, without the H. This is an honorary old rascal. You know, he starts praying for the sick. Well, they start falling under the power. I don't believe that. He just starts shouting, saying out, he's up in the balcony. I don't believe any of that. He's knocking them down. And she's ever going, shh, 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 shh. And he's just right on, he's just cantankerous. Well, guess what? Guess what? He don't believe it. He's knocking them down. He, he don't, he's not in what? He ain't in faith. Hello? But see, now, here, here's the other story. Now, Brother Hagin's telling the story. He says, he's going down the line. He's laying hands on people. And he sees the glory start rolling into the back of the, back of the building and up in the balcony and start rolling down. Now, you may or may not ever see the glory like that. Praise God if you do. And praise God if you don't. Amen. I've, I've, I, upon occasion, I've seen, I've seen the glory, I think, two, maybe three times in my life in a church service. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. But we can't depend on it, can we? Well, now here. So this man, this man's going, I don't know, he's knocking them down. I don't believe that. And, and Brother Higgins says on his side of the story, he sees the glory rolling in. All of a sudden, this man starts to holler. It's going all over me. Now, this man's got heart disease, about to die, got all kinds of physical problems. He said, uh, it's going all over me. It's going all over me. It's going all over me. His wife said, what? He said, he, he, he said that power he's talking about. It's going all over me. He got instantly healed. And we know he wasn't in faith. How do you know? He didn't believe. He's, he's telling them, I don't believe that. He's knocking them down. Making fun of it. But see, then sovereignly God moved. I said sovereignly God moved. Why don't he move like that all the time? The, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man that profit with all. Amen. He divides them severally, but the Spirit divides them severally as he wills. They're demonstrated, they're manifested, they're, they come into operation as he wills. Why don't he will do it all the time? You just got my answer. I don't know. What the, that which is revealed is revealed to a thousand generations. The secret thing belongeth to the Lord, but that which is revealed to a thousand generations. There are secret things we don't get to know. I want, we're tough. They're kept in reserve by the Spirit. Amen. In the heart of the Father. Reveal and manifest as He wills. So what do we do? We stay with the Word and do what the Word says. We operate where we can operate. We function where we can function. We do, we do, or this way, we, we, when we get the unction, then we can function in certain ways. Otherwise, we stay with what the Word says. We do it the way the Bible says do it. Can you say amen? amen? 
and rejoice in all the results and all the, all the things we get done because of it. Now, let me say this. If you can get people in the faith, you can always get them the answer. That's why the Bible tells us to go make disciples of all men. We're to teach them and train them and develop them in the things of God and the faith of God so they can walk by faith and not by sight. Did you know over in Hebrews chapter 11, faith, I mean Hebrews chapter 6, faith is one of the foundation principles of the doctrine of Christ. Amen. And so what we want to do is we want to teach people to live according to the Word of God. And if they, they get into faith, they can always get the answer by faith. Now, we thank God. Now, as charismatic Pentecostals, uh, word of faith, you know, crazy matics, cruisomatics, nutbagmatics, whatever. That's us. We've probably been in all those camps at least sometime in our life. You know, we grow up, we move out of some of the crazy ones. Hopefully. Amen. But when we learn, we, we love the Holy Ghost. But see, one of the things is because we love the... the the ease of the work of the Spirit. Think about it. That man didn't have to believe. He didn't have to study. He didn't exercise his faith. He just sat there and mocked the whole service and God saw him and got him healed. And don't we all want it easy? Yeah, we love Hungry Jack Instant Potatoes. Now, we'll go to somebody's house that took the time to peel the potatoes, to boil the potatoes, to mash the potatoes, to mix them with uh, heavy cream and butter and salt and, and, and get them all nice and smooth and all that. But we want to go home. I don't want to put all that effort into it. Idaho and mashed potatoes from, from Food Line. All right, we got them. And they ain't the same. I said they ain't the same. Somebody's going, I ain't never tasted the other kind. I don't know the difference. Bless your heart. Anyway. Anyway. You know, it's going to take some effort to get homemade mashed potatoes. Hello? And homemade biscuits, that's right. I mean, you know, now listen, you're not going to go anywhere in town and find like Janie makes. Or does, does Darlene make them too? All right. I, I know some of y'all might. Uh, lard and buttermilk. Oh, yeah. We don't use Crisco. We buy lard. Buttermilk biscuits, there you go. Yep. We get, get, Jane, Jane gets the flour in there and puts a little hole in there with a hand. Gets some lard, slaps in there, pours buttermilk in there. Even out-of-date buttermilk. It gets better after it gets out-of-date. Hello. Yeah, you want it, you it out-of-date. Then she'll mix that up, pat them out, put them on the pan. She don't, she don't do all the rolling and cutting stuff. She just makes it. They, they look homemade. But Lord Jesus, uh, get them out of the pan. Get you some grandmama's, mo grandma's molasses. Put a hole right down in that sucker and pour that molasses right in the hole. Mm. Mm. Some commentary should be left at the door. 4,000 calories. Now, but you get up on the morning, you don't feel like it, you run down to, to Bojangles or Hardee's. But ain't none of them places using lard. And there just ain't nothing like lard for making biscuits. So it's not good for you. This is not the discussion. It's, this is a taste bud discussion. Okay? Oh, my, 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 my. I mean, make you shout. Now, here's how bad it was. Janie grew up, she had homemade biscuits, breakfast, lunch, and dinner as a kid. Her mama made them every meal. When they got a canned biscuit, they had a treat. That was a treat. Because <laughs> it tasted different. You got that right, it tastes different. I grew up on them. Every time we had them, they were burnt. We had to cut the bottoms off. That was our counting system for how many you had. We had stacks of bottoms sitting inside the plate. You think I'm joking. Now, let's go back here. Jesus didn't mention anything about faith. This man came, understood authority, and then it was recognized as great faith. So then, understanding the use of authority is equated to understanding how to operate in faith. And that's why I went and go, to go back another step. That's why there's been such an assault on respecting authority from our school systems 
the indoctrination of rebelling against authority. Do you know what? We do not have a constitutional right to protest. You hear it all the time. We don't have a constitutional right to protest. You have a constitutional right to peaceful assembly and the redress of grievances. That's what the Constitution guarantees you. Now, in that, that peaceful assembly, you can voice your opinion about something. But see, people say, well, I, got, I got a right to protest. You don't have the right to come out and stop my car. And to interfere with me, well, that's not peaceful protest. That's not peaceful assembly. Amen. We need to get people retaught the things, the things that understand our con They don't understand the Constitution because the professors don't want them to understand the Constitution because they want to use them to destroy the nation. You have a right to peaceful assembly and the redress of grievances. Now, redress of grievances is a legal term, meaning you had the right to be heard. Okay? In other words, you, your grievance has a, you have a right to have your grievance heard. And you can do it through the court of law and so forth, etc. But you don't have the right to protest. Burning and pillaging and burning down and stopping people from driving their cars and, you know, assaulting people as they're on their way to something because you don't like where they're heading is not a constitutional right. Actually, it's a crime. So we're teaching people not to respect authority. And then we bring them into church, and we went, well, you need to understand how to operate in faith. And most people don't take the time to go back and teach them how to understand authority. And if you don't understand the authority, you really can't exercise the faith. So we now have to take, come back and say, listen, this centurion got recognized as having more faith and greater faith than anybody in Israel because he understood authority. That's right. He understood how it operated. And he recognized in Jesus a man who was set under authority. Therefore, he could say. Why is it that you're thinking, let's go back to some of the things we've already talked about here and kind of tie this back into it. I'm a man set under authority. Meaning what? I can operate and exercise authority, but there is a scope or, of limitation to that authority because I'm set under it. In other words, it's delegated or granted to me from somewhere else to hint to the centurions from the Roman Empire. They, he, he couldn't take over. He couldn't go take over Rome. He didn't have that authority. He couldn't transfer his authority to a Jew. He didn't have the authority. He was set under authority. Amen? Now, we as it are, because Jesus is the head of the church, we're his body, you know, that he was raised up and set together in heavenly places, praise God. You know, he's far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 1. End of the chapter. And he turned or delegated the authority that he was sent under, that he gained how? By, remember the guy's name how? By inheritance, by bestowal, and by conquest. I almost need my marker board in here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Got his name three ways. <clears throat> Gave him to be the head over all things, what? To the church. We are now set under the delegated authority of the head of the church. Now we can say, amen, and we can command, and we can do. Now, I'm going to step into something just a little bit here. I don't know if my watch is working. It's, it's been stopping and all this kind of crazy. I don't know if it's the right time or not. Yeah, it's, it's close. Hallelujah. All right. But Jesus operated under, you remember, if you'll study the Old Testament, there are three realms of authority in the Old Testament, or anointing. And each anointing carried an authority. The prophet, the priest, and the king. In the Old Testament, there were three people that were anointed by the Holy Ghost. They were the prophet, the priest, and the king. Now, the king was, to, was, was anointed to rule over the kingdom, the earthly kingdom. The priest was, the, was to serve the people in the um, in the things of God. In other words, they, the, the, pre, the priestly ministry was in service to God. The prophet's ministry was the voice of God to people. Okay? The prophet's ministry was the voice of God to people. 
The Christian believer now operates under the three anointings of Jesus. It's prophet, priest, and king. We, can, we, 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 we minister to the Lord as believers. We rule as kings and priests in this life. Amen. And, we, um, and, then, and then we, we, we speak with prophetic authority. Now, don't go get weird. We're not going to release a thousand prophets out of Faith and Victory Church. You know, go out and just grab somebody out the street and start prophesying to them. I mean, people are always trying to teach somebody to do something that they can't teach somebody to do. You can show and demonstrate to people how to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost and yield to His voice and then operate in that which He divides severally as He wills. You can't teach people to just go prophesy. People do it all the time. They went, ah, the Lord says this and the Lord says that and the Lord showed me this and the Lord showed me that. And about half of it, or sometimes even more, is just your head. It got so bad in the Bible, Paul, I mean, I believe Paul wrote it. But he wrote it where that people are entertaining angels. Or in another place, he said, you've puffed them up in your mind. You know, saying they're having visitation, you just puffed them up in your mind. So there's nothing, there's nothing new. If Satan can't keep you out of stability, he'll push you into nuts bag. And so what do we do? Well, you can't, see, see we, we, we speak, when we speak the word of God, we're speaking, understand this, how I'm trying to say this, in a prophetic manner. In other words, you are making a declaration by the anointing of God of what the word of God says. You're speaking a prophetic, but no, you're not prophesying you should go to Africa and, you know, and the Lord says, you know, that you're going to have five, you know, five children, two of boys, three of them girls, all, you know. We, we, you know, we just walk up to some stranger. The Lord says this, the Lord says that, and the Lord says this, and the Lord says that. Let's not become Madame Lorraine. The, the, one of the palm reader names. You know, they all have a, a Madame Lorraine or Madame Marie or, who, you know, whoever. <clears throat> you know, got a sign outside a rundown mobile home, financial advice given. You go down to Eastern Carolina, you see it all the time. All out in the country, it's some rundown ragtag thing. Got the big palm reader sign out there. Financial advice. I'm thinking. <laughs> if that's the best you can do, I'll figure it out for myself. Hello? Marriage device, advice. I, I've been married three times. I know a lot. Not what to do to fix it. Hello? So the, the three anointings, the prophet, priest, and the king, operate in the life of the believer. Amen. We rule and reign as kings in this life. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Um, interesting thing is, you know, where it says we're kings and priests. Actually, the Greek says we're a kingdom of priests. They're anointing to be worshipers of God on every believer. Amen. The anointing to speak under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and make a declaration particularly concerning your life. We can call it prophetic or whatever, but, you know, I, I try to steer away from that just because of the, the things people have done with it. You got groups in, in different parts of the country that are launching thousands of prophets into the world. You've got to be called before you can ever go. It's just like uh, theological seminaries that train people to be a pastor who aren't anointed to be a pastor's. Who weren't called to be pastors. You can call it a duck. If it, you know, and it, it, but if it's not a duck, it ain't a duck. You can quack like a duck, walk like a duck. But if you ain't a duck, you ain't a duck. And yesterday you didn't want to be one anyway. Because Nathan was out with a shotgun taking some down. Came home and cooked some last night. They had duck. Daffy. Or Donald. And so, where are we? <laughs> Jesus, we, we find Luke 10, Jesus gave the authority to the 70. In John 12, Jesus um, told them, said, you know, uh, he, that me, believe, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me, as he's seen me, you've seen the Father. And in verse 49, he said, I have not spoken to myself. As the Father sent me, he commanded me, he said, I should go and speak. And then later on, he says this, uh, as, as the Father sent me, I'll send you. So Jesus went under the authority of the Father. We now go in the authority that Jesus gave us. If 
you want to have you want to have great faith walk learn learn to understand authority and respect authority with something that's even in the church now they don't respect pastors and they don't respect the authority in their life now now when they get mad with me and want to leave the church they'll tell me off you know let me let me just tell you about yourself well I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you. Well, since you, since you still want to do that, let me tell you about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have to sit right in my office and do it. People you probably wouldn't even think would do it, too. Yeah. You know? When they get mad, all of a sudden, they don't have to respect. They can send you nasty letters. Because, see, they chose to say, you don't, you're not, you don't need to be respected because you're not... You're not uh, you're no longer my pastor. You're no longer an authority. Therefore, I can say whatever I want to say to you and about you. Well, that means, I mean, let's just go see what David did with Samuel or Saul. Touch my, not, not my anointing to do my prophets no harm. But see, we got people in the church who don't understand authority, and they're suffering the consequences for it. And they think they're cool because they can now drink and they can now go do and they can now live like the world and still go to church somewhere and be accepted. And the whole time they don't have an understanding of this. They are setting themselves up for failure. Amen. And it ain't going to come two weeks after you did it or two years after you did it. But if, you don't, if you don't get it together, it's going to come. And you're going to pay the price. And you don't want to pay that price. And we're going to have to stop because it's getting late. I know it's... it's we could, we could carry on and go, go get really good here. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.